my studio. <laughs> now, is it okay if I do this from my car? We're fine. Of course. Of course. My studio is basically in my garage and it's so hot. <laughs> it's so hot. Oh, here. shit. Hold yeah. on. You have a garage? Are you rich? Yeah. I don't understand. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm honestly shocked. Like, my hair, my hair is shocked too. Look at that. <laughs> because, uh, yeah. Like, I can't even fathom. Wait, do you have like a what's the word? A house? <laughs> uh, no, no. I I have I live in an apartment building, but we have our own private garages. What city? In Sherman Oaks. I live in Sherman Oaks. Really? Wait, is that Augustino? <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah. like on Ventura. That's so funny. <laughs> I'm like on the cusp of uh, like Sherman Oaks and Studio City. If oh, that's even <laughs> more money. Okay, yeah, I'm more towards. <laughs> the Galleria. You know what? This is done. I get it. <laughs> I just, I'm so happy for you. No, if not I at all. I had a garage during the, by the way, we started, right? Like we're talking. Well, the video is recording. The audio is not yet, but um, I, I can still hear you fine. And I can cut this up for bonus footage just because it's funny. And, uh, but for the actual like great audio, we'll, we'll, we'll like officially start in a second. Okay, great. Just okay. tell me when we're ready so I can save the, <laughs> Please take your seats. School is now in session. Welcome to Homeschool Podcast. Homeschool. The Homeschool Podcast. Why? Because it was homeschool. It's time to document the journey. Welcome back to Homeschool Podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode. We're super excited to have you. Percy's extra excited, even more than I, I am. Uh, no, I really appreciate you. We know you got a lot of options out there for podcasts, so the fact that you show up, it means the world to us every single day. And uh, first of all, I want to thank everybody who came out to my shows last weekend in Austin, Texas. If you were there, it was great to meet you in person, and thank you for supporting uh, my, my tour this year. And uh, if, you, if you've missed it and you're looking for more opportunities to see me, guys, this weekend I'm in Paso Robles, California. The first show sold out, but there's still tickets left for the 9 o'clock, and um, that's uh, in Paso Robles, so that's the day before Father's Day, so Saturday. June 19th and it's going to be a lot of fun you can get tickets at homeschooledpod.com and while you're there make sure that you go ahead and click on merch and you can pick up a t-shirt and support the show we have homeschool podcast t-shirts three different designs including the only love can save the world design which is the name of my tour this year and uh, if you come out to the show rocking a shirt it, it's even better so I hope I see you guys there um, now we are officially started are you done yet? <laughs> Uh, what am I supposed to do during this 40 minute plug? That was actually a really short one. <laughs> oh, oh, no. I went fast. I only plugged one date. <laughs> How are you, bud? Good. Um, wait, did you introduce me? I don't even know. What You're in the show. You, that's it. The show's just off and going now. Now we're just off and going. So good to see you. We were just talking before you started recording where I was like having the time of my life with you <laughs> that you are sweaty and hot because you're in a garage. But who cares about that? You have a garage. Yeah. Which means you've got money. <laughs> it's so funny. LA and in Sherman Oaks. Can I tell people where he lives? That cool? That's fine. Yeah, yeah. He's at 6512. <laughs> <laughs> Ventura. <laughs> yeah, that's so crazy. We're very close. I'm surprised we don't run into each other more often. Oh, I don't go out. Yeah. Like, I don't leave. It's so weird. People don't understand because I'm such a, when I'm, like when I'm out, my, doing my stand-up or whatever, you know, um, I'm very peacock, big, you know? Yeah. And everything else is so, so small. Not my hair. But like everything <laughs> else is just like so, like I don't drink, I don't party, I don't go to clubs, I don't smoke, I've never done weed. It's like people are like, oh my gosh. I can tell because you said I've never done weed instead of. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely a person who's never done weed. <laughs> yeah, that's how you know. That's how you know. But I'm good. It just feels great to um, be out. And by out, I'm obviously in my car. Yeah. That to me is a freaking outing. This um, is you out. Yeah, I'm out. I'm out and about. I'm quarantining with my sister. And, uh, you know, our, our condo, you know, we live together. We're twins, we're twindians. Our condo is super small, and so it's like every time I'm doing, like, anything in my room, she's like, you need to lower your voice! 
And so I was all this podcast. I was just so excited. I'm going to be so loud. Let me just do it in my car. <laughs> Let me save us. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So now instead I'll annoy my neighbors. <laughs> so, she, so you guys are twins. But is, is mm-hmm. she is she in some ways the older sister? <laughs> like the bossy one? Oh my gosh. 100%. People actually think she's like years, years older. Because of her look. No, she's, no, she's, she's gorgeous. <laughs> She looks just like me, and we have the exact same personality, and we actually sing a lot to our neighbors, <laughs> much to our neighbors' detriment. But um, yeah, we're exactly one hundred percent alike, and we're we're cute. We're in this together. You oh, know? so that's you guys I hear singing. <laughs> <laughs> sisters. See, sisters. everybody thought that here in Sherman Oaks we had a firework problem. Apparently, that's just the end of your concert. <laughs> <laughs> that's cute. Where are you guys originally from? Uh, you mean like like India? No, I I was I guess I'm asking were you born in the states? On, does your white ass mean India? No, India? I meant like where did you grow up? <laughs> Orange County. Really? Uh yeah, I was a fat gay Indian boy in Orange County. I still can't believe I like survived, you know? Yeah. And got out, and um, everything is just you know it's very polite and. And, and 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 white and <laughs> straight and you know all the things that I tried to be in yeah the, you know in the very early 20s so yeah were you born in India or here in the states yeah, uh in yeah in America in yeah, Orange in County what yeah, in Orange County. what brought your family to Orange County oh my god what a great question this is so <laughs> cool. nobody ever no and you know what's funny I just realized how disgusting I am I just put the video so I can see you. Uh-huh. I was honestly watching myself the entire time. <laughs> like a freak. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, is, is my shirt too tight? It's been so long. You haven't Although seen I me did, yet? I did lose a pound because uh, we got our gym back open. Oh, nice. So I have been living my best life running because my sister and I uh, freaking bought a treadmill to put in our condo, right? Because when all the gyms closed, right? Yes. Uh First day, and and also like I'm such a germaphobe. The guy was like trying to put the treadmill together and all that stuff, and I'm I'm going crazy because he was all, you know, I don't like to work with a mask, so I'm just gonna take it off. And we were just like, <laughs> no, 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 like, oh no, you will very much keep that on. So that de- debacle, it finally was like set up and stuff. And then that day, we learned because we're on the second floor, we can't have a treadmill. Oh no way. <laughs> So it's just become a beautiful decorative, I don't know, coat hanger or whatever it is now. Oh, man. You should put it in your garage. (laughs) I'm just kidding. That that actually kind of (laughs) hurts. Let me ask you this. I would be so hot. Like, I would be thin. I would be glowing. So so finally, our our condo um, apartment gym opened, and I've been running. And, like, I feel more like myself now because the endorphins are flowing. I can see my cheekbones, you know. But did you only put on one pound during during the whole thing? Oh, no. <laughs> I've not dared to step on a scale. But I would say, oh, God, it has to be 12 to 15 pounds. You think so? Yeah, that, which is so weird to me because it's like I made sure no takeout. I cooked all our meals um, from scratch. I became a little housewife. Um, and so... It was like steak with some seasoning, chicken with some seasoning. I don't know how I got like, how do you gain weight with that? Because before I'd be like pizza, wings, ranch, you know, you know how I like. So I guess the gym kept a good balance for you. And that was a big part of it. I guess what I never knew because I was just like, I like running and going to the gym and seeing, you know, good looking men. (laughs) It's very much part of that culture. Did you? No, I, I knew that already. Okay. I think that we've had this conversation. I think I've seen you on stage, and I, and I maybe you mention it. Maybe that's how I knew. I think that's like the, one of the first things I say. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I know some comics are like, oh, you know, some gay comics are like, I don't like to tell the crowd that I'm gay up front. I like to wait about a good tip. Why? I disagree. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> what are you hiding? It's, it's not like, they, you know, put it out there. Talk. About I agree. The whole set. My yeah. whole set is very much third world homosexuality. It's very mm-hmm. much being a queer of color and, you know, growing up in a place where you wanted it to be the opposite. Yeah. I remember being at the Irvine Spectrum. It's a place in Orange County. I, yeah, I I'll know it. I'll get to your question in a second. Don't even worry about it. I know it. it. I know it. 
was the question you asked 20 minutes ago? Yeah. We'll get to that. <laughs> I remember one of my first, because you're kind of so brainwashed there, like you're just kind of swimming upstream almost, but not really knowing it. Mm-hmm. I remember being at the Irvine Spectrum, and one of my white friends said, oh my God, Percy Duck behind this car. And I was like, wait, why? He was like, because that's my ex over there. And how, what am I supposed to explain to him? That, and what, now I'm friends with somebody who's Indian? <laughs> and I, I remember saying, oh my God, you're right. <laughs> what? <laughs> duck, duck, goose. It's that, that kind of brainwashing. You never really know. It wasn't until I moved to LA and did the CBS showcase. I don't know if you've heard of the CBS showcase. Yeah. Showcase CBS puts on every year for like comics of color mm-hmm. uh, and like the LGBT comics um, and actors too. And that we had started having these conversations that that wasn't normal. And I was like, it's not like, I just thought that is like a person of color and is like somebody queer. You just try to be straight and white. <laughs> Isn't that so ridiculous? Yeah, it's Bitch, pretty ridiculous. I wore blue color contacts. I had a surfer wig. <laughs> I was fooling everybody. <laughs> I think that, yeah, I, I'm actually really surprised because that doesn't sound like, I mean, I guess it was a different time, but that doesn't sound like Orange County. That doesn't sound like anywhere in Southern California, you know, but I guess it was the time, right? Yeah. I mean, um, what, probably 10 years ago when okay. I first, when I first noticed. That's actually kind of surprising. That's not that long ago. So yeah, but grow, yeah, growing up and growing up was like, what, 20 years ago, you mm-hmm. know? So, so it's like, I mean, yeah, no, it definitely wasn't. I know if I visited now, I mean, you know, I'm sure there's pride flags everywhere, you know, but like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I don't know where them flags were when I was in seventh grade, you know, Yeah. popping out of that trash can, you know, every day that I got thrown into, you know what I'm saying? The world is changing. Two weeks ago, I was in, I was performing in Salt Lake City, Utah. And, you know, you know, the uh, stereotypes about Utah, that they're very Mormon and very conservative and, and. Mm-hmm. Bro, uh, pride flags everywhere you go, every corner. That makes, so, that makes me so happy. That makes me so happy. I don't know what tone we're about to get into, but <laughs> I will say, though, that, like, uh, if I had seen that growing up, I wouldn't have been so afraid. Mm. I wouldn't have been so shamed, ashamed of myself, and I wouldn't have felt so alone, you know? Uh, if I had seen that growing up as a kid. Yeah. Be- because I remember the second I remember realizing I was of homosexual nature, I remember being like, oh no. Oh my God, what am I going to do? Uh, I guess this is it. Like, I can like run away, you know? So that's yeah. so amazing to yeah. see in Utah. I was I was pretty surprised in Utah, you know. Uh, I'm so happy. There's that's um so beautiful. there's a temple down the road, like from where I was performing, and even they had a flag out, which is. Uh, super shocking they were just like yeah we're, co- we're 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 you know we're coming around we're coming around and outside I mean, my um coming around like yeah <laughs> they've been around that mountain when she comes i mean because, like, Utah, <laughs> that's I a big one yeah i feel like is that is that more progressive in orange county i know oh, wow. but i imagine if you start branching out of the city in utah you won't find it so this is Salt Lake City. I have found that when you go to like the main cities, it's definitely more like when you go to Portland, you're like you see it. But when you travel 30 minutes outside of Portland, same with oh. Seattle, same with you know what I mean. Like it, it gets more conservative outside of the major cities. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, I just thought of Utah. I just thought of it like but so Salt Lake City. Place. But that's still huge because when I first started performing and on the on the road, years and years and years ago, everyone was so like be a little clean. It's Salt Lake City, you know, and now people are so educated on stand-up comedy. They know what good comedy is, and they're not afraid to go out and hear some stuff. And not only uh-huh. that, like, outside the venue I was performing was this giant pride flag, and it, it like, kind of rained a little through Obviously, during my I'm show. I'm just confused why ev- wherever you go, gain is falling. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I don't mind, but, you know, oh, speaking of which, so there was this rainbow, like a real rainbow that formed outside oh my, my show gosh. and there was the, the pride flag was waving. I was like, I got to take this picture. <laughs> <laughs> oh, got you, got you, got you right over it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. Okay. So you said, okay, that's, so you said outside of Salt Lake City, which reminded me. So I, after nine months of being in a condo with my sister who I love, we're best friends, whatever. I was like, I, mm-hmm. it's time to, I need to work. Yeah. So I'm a warm-up comic. I don't know if you knew that. Um, uh, no, I don't think I did. No. So I'm sure you know what a warm-up comic is, right? Yes. 
So they're the ones that are like, you know, we're, we're, like, we're too ugly to actually be a part of the show. So we kind of warm up the crap. You know? <laughs> That's not what it is at all, but... <laughs> So let me explain to the audience really quick if you don't know what a warm-up is. It's not like, oh, you mean the guy that opens comedy shows? No. It means it's the guy who performs for television shows that you don't see actually filmed, like when you're watching The Tonight Show with Fallon. Um, it, so Percy might come out and perform before the show even starts, before the tape even starts, just so the crowd's light. Even if there's no comics on the show that night, it's just, mm -hmm. it's still like, you know, so the crowd's light and they're in a good mood and they're happy and they're laughing in a laughing mood. Yeah, because, you, you know, um, to make a TV show, I mean, it's just so expensive, right? And there's so many writers. And as you know, oh, my gosh, and we'll talk about that, um, you're a total, total, total package, total writer, <laughs> perform everything, you know? <clears throat> but, like, shows are super expensive, and people are going to tapings, um, and they have to be done really quickly. Like, you never know kind of what mood they're in, like, if they just got off the bus, if they just, uh, you know, got in a fight with their lover, you That's know? Right. You know, if something bit them on mm -hmm. the way there. So you never really know what mood they're in when they sit down and it might not always be at first the mood that is like oh i am good to go some are like that thank goodness yes you know? yeah some are not so that's the warm-up you are literally like literally warming them up making them happy i do a huge broadway dance number wonderful <laughs> and i end up like on my back like in like not in this not in a full split but yeah you know, whatever my body can still do i love you it know? and then the crowd <laughs> up and excited and wild and know that, like, oh, this little Indian <laughs> can make, make fun of himself and a fool of himself, then we are all part of a family now. You know, I make everybody a family I love as it. soon as I can. Yes. So then that way, when the, the actual show starts taping, uh, uh, people are ready to laugh, okay? Of course. It ain't even got to be that fun. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know? I have already tickled you, you know, so that's kind of what I do, and I love it so much. Because everybody can kind of let everything else go and bond over, you know, music and dance and me doing the splits <laughs> <laughs> that's great that but i mean that's a great experience i'm glad that it uh it ended up working out it could have gone way oh. worse <laughs> okay <laughs> that's what my friends they were they were like oh how did it end up because it was it was just me and a mic for six hours a day wow. you know wow which that'll train you to for crowd work like no like i remember yeah. i mean i don't know what games i pulled out of yeah where, but like i was like okay you guys ready to <laughs> Here, Cotton Eye Joe again? Let's go, you know? <laughs> before, we, um, before we get on a different topic, there's a couple of things that, uh, I'll touch on really quick because you just said that. One thing really quickly is that um, I'm, ex I'm very loud on stage. I yell a lot. I'm very vocal. And lately, I've been doing a lot of longer sets. I've been headlining a lot lately. So I'm doing... I saw it. so cool. Yeah, it's going great. I'm very thankful but I'm on stage 45 to 60 minutes, which is very typical for the headliner. Oh, wow. And it, um, and, but it, it's, it's oh, yeah. becoming a lot. Every single time I get off stage, my throat is killing me, killing mm -hmm. me. So mm -hmm. I'm actually, someone suggested, and I'm actually going to be taking some courses from a vocalist to learn how to like control. If you want to still project you, and, and then oh, still, okay. it, you? yeah. So you, okay, I thought you said corsets. No, like, courses. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I, guess, I guess that would push, like, the blood up to your... Yeah, I'll put a little corset on, and then... Okay. <laughs> no, they're going to... Then the, you can do, like, a little Rocky Horror number. Yeah, a class. <laughs> I'm going to have a couple sessions. I was, like, I was like, don't interrupt him, but what could he possibly <laughs> say? Okay, corsets. Yeah, some <laughs> sessions with a vocalist. So I can project my voice without harming my vocal cords. Apparently, you know, a lot of singers do it so that concert after concert, they're not, like, destroying their voice. And by the time that I'm 40, I'm going to sound like I've smoked my whole life. <laughs> you know? August, you know, is this a nice way of telling me, Percy, I think you're yelling? No. <laughs> no. See, I don't really yell. Like, I'm, like, right now this is normal talking to me. But when I'm on mm -hmm. stage, it just – something comes out of me. The energy. I'm loud. I, I yell, you know? And 100 percent what i've also noticed is now more with outdoor shows like you kind of really have that's to true that. that's true um i did my very first stand-up show two weeks ago the first stand-up show in 14 months wow. and i remember being like okay it looks like what you really need to do is kind of a warm-up yeah and like a loud like hey because i mean they're like birds are chirping like the, the trees are moving you know traffic <laughs> And there's traffic, yes, 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 yes. 
and then other other venues doing their own thing. Mm-hmm. So you know, you gotta so yell. Yeah, yeah. And there's something about the social distance tables of them being far apart from each other rather than before. They used to be really close together, and it's a great ambiance. And mm-hmm. and and your instinct when they're so far apart and spread out is to kind of yell, so it reaches mm-hmm. everybody in the room. Uh, it's kind of your instinct, so that's something I'm 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 uh, going through <laughs> right now. But uh, I think I'm gonna take the the sessions and see how that goes. Also, what I have learned, because I scream a lot mm-hmm. and I sing a lot during my like my stuff, um, not sing well. I just love to freaking wail <laughs> and sing, and have fun, you know. <laughs> um, I'm a recording artist now. Is what I'm trying to tell you. Obviously. Okay. Okay. Uh, raw ginger root. Has mm. anybody told you this? I mean, I I eat them. I just don't do it that often. I know no one told me. Well, you actually eat raw ginger root? Not all the time. Just like if I feel I'm getting a sore throat, or if if you're sick, oh I. God. I put it in tea and stuff like that. Oh, my gosh. Mm-hmm. I was going to tell you to do that. So I, I grate. Yes. I've been doing this for years. Uh, uh, raw ginger and garlic. Don't oh, be, don't yeah. Don't kiss nobody. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you have a wife, right? You yes. Have a wife? Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you still have a wife after quarantine? Yes, oh. I do. <laughs> I think that um, that's the reason why I heard about the ginger root already is because my wife introduced me to it, and uh, and she's Russian, and you foreigners know all about that stuff. <laughs> and tell, that's I love that you said that because I honestly thought it was like one of my Indian secrets that I love giving my Caucasian friends. You know? <laughs> yeah, you know, we we, uh, we don't know enough. We don't we don't know nothing, bro. Uh, Us white y'all people. Know nothing. They don't know nothing. You ever see white people posting the food they made? I'm like, guys, that looks horrible. They're always mixing stuff that shouldn't mix. Like they put bacon around like a kiwi. It's like, no. <laughs> oh, well, that's fu- Oh, my gosh. So there was a time where my mom was trying to, you know, uh, solve Corona. <laughs> <laughs> Typical Indian mom, right? She cares about the kids so much. So does daddy. But my mom's crazy. And so she one week. Kiwis were the us uh, were the cure for Corona. Is what she I love she had it. Read. I love it. So when I drove to Orange County for our Sunday treat to pick up tons of Indian food that my mom and dad had cooked for us all day because they're the best parents ever. Nice, the biggest sweethearts, and bring it back to Sherman Oaks. Right. I remember eating some because I'm fat. So I remember like being like grabbing a piece of garlic bread, chewing it as I you know went down the the five. And then I remember, like, this is this is the weirdest taste in this. Is this pesto? What is this green sauce that's coming out? My mom smashed kiwis into every thing she could. Oh, that's funny. That's so funny. Everybody <laughs> had their little cures, right? <laughs> I mean, it is a great source of vitamin C. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, <laughs> I, my immunity just shot up. It was great. Yeah. But um, yeah, everybody, you're absolutely right. Everybody, I remember watching videos uh, of we found the cure, and it was it is one of the cures was sticking your face into a pot of steam. And at the time, I remember my like sweating with my sister, and she was like, "Are you sure?" I was like, "Hurry, just bring the cloth." Yes. And yes. I remember being like, "How is any of this?" I remember inhaling it and thinking, "Yeah, I feel like my lungs are." Like, <laughs> I'm, my lungs are on fire. My and wife did that to face. me. Huh? My wife did that to me. She, oh, you, oh, you oh, put oh, the oh. towel over your head and you lean over the pot and she puts like, uh, what do they call it? Eucalyptus oil in there? Yeah. And you yeah, breathe it yeah. in. It does help your sinuses open for sure. Oh, I felt, I felt amazing. The notes I could hit. That <laughs> Maybe I should do but, that tonight. But it's like, but I'm so crazy obsessive that uh, I, like, I just remember inhaling it for like 10 minutes and being like, this cannot be helping. Yeah. Like this, this, cannot, this cannot be good. <laughs> By the Anyways, way. Anyways, what was your original question? Oh, wait. There's somebody shirtless running. Hold on one second. <laughs> <laughs> I really wrote it down. I'm so lonely. I'm sorry. I'm just so lonely. Wouldn't that be funny if we had a surprise guest on the podcast? Yeah, just sit in the car with me. <laughs> you were doing a podcast. Have a seat. <laughs> shirtless Steve is here. But it's the same. But it's the same guy that when you said courses, I'm not joking. He was kind of walking like this. And so my mind really did go to courses. So funny. Is he out just walking or is he jogging? Well, where did his shirt go? Uh, he was <laughs> jogging that way. Now he's walking. This is disgusting. I'm so sorry. No, it's all right. I'm just, if you know anybody, I have been single for <laughs> the last person I dated. And I said this to my friend a few days ago. The last person I dated, one of our dates was guess what movie? Oh, Bridesmaids. Stop. In theaters. Two thousand eleven. 
Rides no way. The uh-huh. I was trying to think post-pandemic. I was gonna, and it was actually no. way further than that. Really? Like Ten years. So you, but yeah. you've, but you've dated, but that was that was like the last person you were like together with, like a serious relationship, or no, that was the last date. It wasn't the last date. I've been on a few, but right. it was like, and I wouldn't call it a serious relationship, me and him, but like, yeah, it was uh, 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 casual dating, and then it was just like he was seeing somebody else the entire time. So I said, oh. I'll never love again. And oh I, no! I quit, I quit everything cold turkey for years. And then you focus on your career. <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah exactly i mm-hmm. said i said because this is what happened i said um i know what'll make me happy i'm not happy i know what'll make me happy a husband because that's what all my friends did in orange county yeah <laughs> all my straight guy friends didn't know they found a husband no. that's what all, my, <laughs> all my best friends did you know every single one of my i think it was seven straight guy friends married our seven girlfriends wow that, they all fell in love good for them yeah what a beautiful life, you know? And then they're, and they have these, and they have these beautiful children. So I was like, well, that's obviously what needs to happen to me as a, as a gay man of color in Orange County. That's exactly what's going to happen. And so I went full force mm-hmm. looking for what I thought was happiness and it never worked out. And then after 2011, after, um, <laughs> after I realized, <laughs> I should have known. Every, <laughs> I was like, why does he keep leaving? Like he was like, so <laughs> the entire time. Oh no. And I was like, that's obviously to buy me a little present, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, <laughs> after a couple of weeks, where's this present? And it better be good by now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, that's my never God. fun, I man. I've talked about this in so long. Yeah, right. I talk about it every night. But like, <laughs> <laughs> every podcast. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny um, is that, um, well, it's not funny, but um, it's our career choice. I'm sure that your seven friends that got married. Um, I don't know what they do for a living, and and it's not to say that they don't have a great career that they, that they're married to their job half the time. But our career choice is very difficult for yeah. a spouse because I can't even imagine. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm sure if somebody's married to their job, they're like a lawyer or a doctor, and they get paid in the middle of the night to go deliver a baby. I mean, I'm sure there's so many professions where their wives really miss them or their husbands really miss them. And it, but 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 for our profession, people just don't understand. This is what I've chose, and it's a grind, and and. Even the the lawyer will get time off for a vacation, a funeral, a wedding, as where we're like, I have a gig. I'm sorry I can't go to your wedding. I'm sorry I can't go to your funeral, your uncle's funeral. I, you know what I mean? Oh God! You know, you yes. know but it's true. But it's true. I'm, I'm sorry. Yes. I, you know, I know your uncle passed away, and we're dating. Oh. But I can't go. I have a gig, and the job always comes first because in the, our industry. A vacation or a weekend off that was somebody else that moved up ahead, somebody else that got the job. And it's not just one job, it's a job that could lead to many. And this is it's very difficult. Yeah. So I would say, like, you know, never com- right. Yeah, don't compare because yourself my, to other people. I oh no, I love doing that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I just people have always said to me my entire life and I don't know I don't know how to stop. But it's mm-hmm. it, it, it's it's more observational, not like a why don't I have kids. And yeah. Of course want kids in one day in a garage. I want, <laughs> hats, <okay? laughs> I want those headphones. Um, I want to do a 60 minute set. Okay. Anyway. Okay, like, uh, yeah. It's, it's like, I can't imagine if I had a kid right now had to go to this audition, where would the kid go? Like, I don't understand. Yeah. It's like at the drop of a hat and I'm learning material. And I'm on my way. Exactly. You know, and even well, I guess now with Zoom, it's much different now, and that is going to be the new norm. But uh, yeah, I I just can't even imagine what it'd be like. I mean, how do you even have a wife? Good <laughs> for you. Um, is she she has to be so understanding. Yes, and so there's a couple of or things. She must be really good in bed. <laughs> it has to be. It's a combination of all. First of all, she's way better looking than I am. She's completely out of my league. So it's all oh. big dick and personality, okay? Oh, my God. <laughs> keep it clean. Oh, okay. It's big dick and personality. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's right. You asked me to keep it clean. Uh, okay, so. I like how I said keep it clean, and then you just repeated it. <laughs> I, okay, so, so to tell you the truth, it's actually the fact that I have a garage. <laughs> uh, no, but it's it's a perfect combination of like all these things have to really work um your your spouse has to also have their own things going on to where they're also busy 
that helps a lot. Yeah. Um, yes, they have to be very understanding, and um, you know, and you have to reserve time for them. You cannot. Oh, yeah, you yeah, have yeah. to. It's mm-hmm. another full time job, just like having a podcast. You go. I have to do two episodes a week. Um, you know, if I'm on the road, I, I have our date nights that are two nights a week. And if and if for some reason I can't make it because I'm on the road, the date night just gets moved to the other night, and it's just you just have to, you know. That's so sweet. You're such a big sweetie pie. This, you know? <laughs> I, can, I can really tell you're a nice, sweet guy because, um, yeah, that crossed my mind too. I was like, if I had a boyfriend, yeah, right. But like, if I had a boyfriend, mm-hmm. you know, like I feel like right now we would have to be going to dinner instead of me kind of trying to work on some new material. Not that I have. Been. But yeah. you know what I'm saying? But you need you an know? understanding boyfriend who's going to go, I can go din- to dinner with you, but it's got to be on Monday this week. Or uh, Monday and Tuesday this week, it's you and me. But the other yeah, nights. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you and your wife, do you guys live together? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that help? That help yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it helps. With the, it helps. And, and also going on the road helps too because when you live together and then you leave for two days, and you come home, you're like constantly missing each other. So that keeps things fresh too. I mean, keep in mind that it's also, it's gotta be the person you got to find. I got extremely lucky and I was oh, married once up. before, dude. Oh, I was married once before. Wasn't a comic, got married, became a comic, got divorced right away. Didn't work out. It's very difficult for the, for the spouse or your partner. Yeah. It's a very that difficult industry. How'd you meet your, your beloved? She was get this, and I and I know that you're gonna know the club. She was a waitress at the Haha ha Comedy Club. <laughs> oh, that's where I have my show. Yeah, well, at the old one. This is years ago. So they used to be it down the street. It was like a different location. Yes, the the original Haha ha was down the street on Lancashire, at a smaller oh, venue, yeah. at an old their older venue, but it's the the OG. That's where I got my start as a comedian, and that's where she worked. She was a waitress there. And then um, we met, started dating, um, got married. I mean, she did, she hasn't worked there in years, but like, <laughs> but yeah, we've we we've been married this August. We will have been married five years. Oh my god! Yeah. I wanted to ask you. I was like, "How long?" That's great. I'm so happy for you. Thanks, man. And and you know, we've had our rough patches, and like, it's it's so normal. You know, we've had our little. Oh, good. That yeah. Makes me feel better. <laughs> <laughs> no, we've we've had uh. We've had a little period where it was, you know, dark and, you know, some nights you sleep on the couch and you're just going through and you're figuring stuff out. But communication has been the best thing, um, which is I'm surprised how long it took me to figure that out as a comedian. But (laughs) communication is Mm -hmm. key. And sometimes it's very embarrassing to talk about your problems out loud, even with your partner, who's like your best friend, who you think you can tell anything to. But when it's about Mm. them, it's very embarrassing. But... It's so important to communicate and go, that bothers me. We need to work on this. And um, that's something yeah. that we do. And, and we, it's been going great. It's been going wonderful. Oh, there is hope. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. It takes work just like a full-time job. But a, like I said, a big part of it's got to be the right person. Well, I did just get a Tinder yesterday. Oh, snap. Oh, my God. Oh, it's so embarrassed that I said that. How's that going? So, uh. Oh, horrific! But um, <laughs> so so in 2011, I so we were like I was done. And I said no more, never. I'm taking everything, everything gay out of my life. I really said that to myself because mm-hmm. it's such a distraction. Because I always knew I wanted to be a comic, but I was like, but this seems like happiness quicker. That's mm-hmm. what I thought, at least at the time. Um, uh, and then uh, I took out everything of my life, and now I just have a blank. Okay, I can't remember what I was talking about. But anyway, who Tinder, okay. Tinder. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> So, so no dating apps, no nothing. Uh, and then, yeah, yesterday, today's Tuesday. Yesterday, I got a Tinder. I was like, maybe I'll go on a date. We'll see what happens. It's so exciting. I feel like I'm going to, like a kid in a candy store. <laughs> You're uh, back out there. I know. No, it's oh, exciting. And, yeah, guys are, I mean, some people are nasty. But, you know, you just block and it's fine. Well, I hope you meet a great person. And I hope that they just understand from the beginning. You're in the entertainment industry, you know. And that's what it is. That's, uh, you know. I, I mean, I'm, I'm sure they will. You know, I mean, who knows? This is just yeah. such a new kind of stage and phase. Yeah. I'm like, like I literally met up with friends one week ago for the first time since March 2020. Wow. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad March, you're getting out there. 
I know. Ha Ha Comedy Club, Percy and Friends, was the last time I was out, and that was March 2020. Do you still have a show there? Yes, it's starting in June 23rd. Nice. Nice. Ah, you must come do 60 Minutes. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't doing no damn 60 Minutes, okay? <laughs> I, put, I put some of my friends on, and, like, they'll go for 16 Minutes, and I'm just like, what are you, like, <laughs> it's fine. Like... <laughs> I run my shows like do however much time you want, but don't be crazy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's awesome. And then the other thing, I uh, there was a second thing I was going to tell you since we're, I I love what you're doing. I love that it, you bring a performance to the stage. There's I've talked about this a couple of times on my podcast already, so I won't harp on it too much. But just telling you, I have been more inspired to bring a big performance to the stage. Um, mm-hmm. I've always been strictly stand-up comedy. I love the brilliance of stand-up comedy. I'm, writing is my thing, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I've never been theatrical. I've never been like, let's do this, get creative on stage, nothing like that. I just want a microphone, stand still, tell you jokes, right? Um, yeah, that, yeah, that's the opposite of it. <laughs> right, right, right. But I've always admired those that, you know, they have – like certain comics, like I don't know if you've ever seen Chris Tucker live do stand-up. Something about him is just even though he's not doing material sometimes you just you can't keep your eyes off some people. Mm-hmm. They're yeah, yeah, yeah. they're performers, they talk, they sing, and you just you can't look away. Um and I've just been really inspired to do something special now that the pandemic is coming to an end and I'm on the road and every show I'm closing with doing something different. And oh my I'm gosh, so like yeah. a musical number? Or... No, although I'm I'm not talented in that way. I can't <laughs> I can't dance. I can't sing. I don't play any instruments. But um, I'm just doing different things. I have had like um, songs played while I did stuff, uh, or I did like a performance piece. Um, I had like this big easel that I wrote like one lining jokes on, which is not my thing. But the point is, is it's different every time. Uh, sometimes I'll just do a bunch of stories. Like I'll just do story time. Some things where I'm interacting with the crowd. So I love that you are, you know, you'll do a dance number or something like that. Uh, I love it. And um, hopefully we can work together on, on, a, on a show and we'll do something like, do you play any instruments or, or um, just dance? Um, <clears throat> absolutely not. But I do <laughs> <laughs> but that's perfect. That's perfect. We'll incorporate uh, just something to always have fun, you know. And I think that uh, you know, there's a bunch of comics that play guitar, and I'll have them open, and I'll sh- let's let's do something. Maybe I'll even write a funny song, something like that. And the, the point do you, is, yeah. Do you, do you like putting your musical acts at the beginning or end? End. Oh, okay. Because you just said open, so I was like, oh wait. Well, because the I well think- the comedians open because they're comics too. They do their set, and then but they also happen to know how to play guitar. Is what I'm saying. So at so the end, a, yeah. A musical, like a musical thing should be at the very end? Yes. Oh, okay, good. Okay, because Luke Null is going to close on <laughs> June 23rd. Okay. <laughs> you, do you know Luke? No. He he was on SNL for a year, and he does this amazing guitar comedy like bit. Oh, that's and really so, cool. Yeah, and so I one time put him up in the middle, and then I was like, that was so such an amazing high. <laughs> it probably should have been the finale. Yeah, you know? yeah. Well, you know, um, Did and you know then Tehran? yeah, uh, yeah, yes. So Tehran was all bro because he was hosting my show that night. Mm-hmm. He was all, you put on the musical act at the end of the show. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's always giving me the best advice. He's a great guy. So I was like, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> well, just this past weekend, I was in Austin, Texas, and a friend of mine who's not a comedian uh, lives there, and he is a musician, and but he plays the drums, and he just so happened to have his his drums in the car. Because he was going oh, to like a oh, get. He just so ha- oh, I accidentally, <laughs> my, I accidentally brought my piano. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was on. He was going to a gig the next day, like driving, and he only has the bass and like the little. I don't know what you call it. The little thing. That's what I call it. The. So that's all he. So it's a very small operation. I go. How about this? I go. Just set it up on stage right now, and then here's what I had him do. And I love doing things like this for my shows. I go just. The beginning of the show, I go, just walk out, don't say anything, sit down, start playing. He played one song and then just went like, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show, and then brought up the host. And then sat there the whole night and played as comedians went up and down. 
And when I went last, so I, when I was on stage, that's when I did the hour. Throughout my set, I would turn to him and maybe have him go like type thing or, you know, just kind of play to with it. But, yeah, the point is, is like I want to do something different and that – uh, every show, I don't want it to always be the same thing, you know. Just incorporate yeah. performance pieces, and we've seen. I love that. So what I, I want to do, that. my goal yeah. is, is like we've seen the brilliant comics, Bill Burr, great writers who just do stand up, and then we've seen guys who are great performers that have performance pieces, like or musicals stuff like that. But we haven't seen one comic who's both. <laughs> and so I just want to um, put on a great show for people. They were quarantined for over a year. People were depressed. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I'm like, I feel like. They want to see a Broadway. I want to give them everything. Yes. Comedy, everything, so they can feel full. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. When when they leave, like that extra gum commercial. Have you seen that yet? No. <laughs> oh my god! I watched it twice today when I was running, and I watched it twice last night. It is, it is just it. It's uh, people being able to break. It goes on the new the news that goes. You can you can leave your house now, and it's and there's like funny bits that are going on, and then it's to the song. From Celine Dion, you know the it's all coming back. Oh yeah, <laughs> and it's, just, it's just everything at once, and I'm just like, ah! you know, that's great. That's what I, I want to do. Give yes. them everything, so they're so they're attacked. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, they feel like they had they they left and they had a great experience. They had a great show, and, and they want to go out and see more things live because it's the best way to it's see always things. Been my style, my style has always been. It comes from insecurity. It's always been. Oh, you didn't think that joke was funny? Well, I can sing. Oh, you don't like music? Well, I'm gonna dance. You know? <laughs> I love it. You know, like, so, so I love it. Like something by the end of this, you know? Yeah. So the original <laughs> question: Why did your parents go to Orange County? <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> I love Wait, it. Yeah, you're right. I love it. I love it. Wait, though. what was the original question? That's like, what it was. Why did your parents move to Orange County? Like, I, I were your parents from India? By the way, I love, yeah, yeah. So I, I love that it worked raised... this way. <laughs> <laughs> My parents were born and raised in India. Mm-hmm. They said we want a better life. We heard America is the land of dreams, so they came to America, landed in Orange County, had me, and was like, "Good luck." <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love it. That's great. I, I love what you're doing, man. I, I love that you're spreading the cheer. Like I said in the beginning, the name of my tour this year is Only Love Can Save the World. So that's why I'm going around town by town and we're making people laugh and we'll, you know, just bringing people together again for live entertainment. And that's what we do. That's what we love. It's, it's, that's what makes it worth it all, dude. Like, you know, being on the road and time away from your spouse or not having a spouse or not seeing your family as much. It's like, it's all worth it when. Well, you, you know, your your dreams come true. Literally, we get to do what we love doing mm-hmm. and what we've dreamed about doing, which mm-hmm. besides money, besides fame, it is a success to do what mm-hmm. you love doing. That's success. Most <sighs> people don't get to even do that. Most people don't know. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Yeah, your camera you turned go? off. Most people don't know even what they love doing. So we're very blessed to know that what, what we love and we already found it and uh, that we want to do it. Sorry. That's okay. Wait, I'm back. Wait, what? That's okay. Did you miss it? What's happening? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's all right. Can you see me now? I see you. Can you hear me? Yes. Am I loud enough? You're, yeah, you're perfectly <laughs> fine. You're, it did buffer a little bit, so maybe it's a signal thing, but we're, we're back. We're good. I was just saying that most people – don't know what they love they've searched their whole lives to find their thing and we're fortunate to already know what ours is not to mention we get to do it so yeah I, yeah very mm-hmm. very very fortunate um everybody uh you can see percy on june 23rd correct <laughs> at every other wednesday starting june 23rd <clears throat> at the haha ha comedy club in north hollywood california um, he has on great comics. He himself is quite the performer. Very, very funny stand-up comedian as well as uh, physical entertainer. And then plus you're going to see a bunch of stand-up comedians. So go check it. Plus that's my home club where I started, and it's great to support them. And and, uh, and you guys are going to have a great time. You got to come You gotta come do the show? Absolutely, I will. Absolutely, I will. You just let me know, dude. You get dude. 10 minutes. <laughs> okay, I'll keep, I'll keep it okay? to 10. <laughs> I'll keep it to 10. I'll bring my garage. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you this, and then we'll go. Do you have a washer and dryer in your unit? I do. See? I don't have that. Oh. I got the garage, oh, but I don't got the washer and dry it. Yeah. Goodbye, garage. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. You can park your car here, and I'll go over and use your washing machine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bring on, bring on. You and your wife, bring it all over. All right, man. Well, it, it was a pleasure having you on. Thank you so much. Where can people follow you, by the way? Instagram at Percy Rusty. Percy, uh, Percy Rusty, and I will obviously have it in the description of this uh, podcast so people can spell it correctly and everything and know where to go find it. So thanks so much, man. Oh, thanks for coming on. Yes, sir. And uh, uh, what's it called? My, uh, I have a TikTok. Do you remember Deborah Wilson from Mad TV? No. I never really watched it. She's a hilarious comic from Mad TV. She was my neighbor, so we used to have singing competitions. Oh, that's funny. Like, And we would piss, piss our neighbors off. One day I recorded it. And it just blew up on my, I almost said Tinder, but my Tinder is blowing up. Okay, anyways, no, Instagram's fine. At Percy Rusty is great. <laughs> okay, perfect. And TikTok, apparently. <laughs> so check it out. Uh, <laughs> thank you, bro. Uh, I appreciate you being on. This was so fun for me. And guys, don't forget, I'm in Paso Robles this weekend. The first show sold out. You can still get Woo. tickets to the 9 o'clock show. I can't wait. So now's the time to do it. And uh, it's Father's Day weekend, everybody. So Speaking of doing something different and special at the end of all my shows, I'm cooking up something in my head right now. I'm thinking of what I want to do for the for for uh, for I'm do something special for dads. So make sure mm. you come out. It's at Cal Coast Brewery. So it's at this. Uh, they have like a little hall behind this brewery. And so I mean, beers, live comedy. What's better to do on Father's Day? So come on out. Tickets are at homeschooledpod.com. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. Thanks for coming on, and um, I'll see you next time. Just, All right, bye, guys. See you, man. Send me a date. I'll do your show if you want on, on course, the Wednesdays. Because. Thanks, dude. All right, bye. Bye. Guys, that was Percy Rostomji. Um, I, I will put in the description the Instagram link to follow him. Really, really funny dude. Great entertainer. Sweetheart of a guy. And, um, you know, go check out his show and support. Go follow him. He, he's, he's great. He's, he's a warm-up comic for a lot of TV shows. He's a background dancer. I, I think, uh, who was it for? I think it was Janet Jackson or something like that. Um, anyway, but just a great dude and a lot of fun and just a born entertainer. So we love supporting comics. We love supporting entertainers and artists on this show. And this is where we document the journey at Homeschool Podcast. I'm Augustino Zoida. Don't forget that only love can save the world. I'll see you guys next time. Homeschool Podcast. Homeschool. The Homeschool Podcast. Why? Because it was homeschool. I don't want to do that. <laughs> no, okay. I don't want to do that at all.